In this video, I'm gonna use a rotary tool and my laser to color engrave this stainless steel tumbler for my partner's birthday so I don't have a repeat of the incident from last year. Oh, and I'll be using a fiber laser, but, but you can actually do color engraving with a diode laser with a caveat. Let's get the tumbler set up on the laser first. So I've got my rotary attached and you will notice I've got it at the back here of my fiber laser in this direction. If you're using a diode laser, you will have your rotary tool typically in this orientation, which is the Y axis. However, for me on the fiber, if I do it on the X axis, I get more room here. Next thing you wanna do is make sure that your surface is level. So for me, because the rotary attaches to the laser itself, I'm going to double check and yes, my laser is level and this will be important in a second. So I've got my stainless steel tumbler here. I'm gonna put it into the jaws of the chuck. Then I'm gonna take these two, I call them Tommy bars. In metal work and stuff, I've heard them for a lathe, I've heard them referred to as Tommy bars, so that's what I'm calling them. And I'm just gonna snug it a little bit, not too much, because I don't wanna bend the top of the cup. You also wanna make sure that the cup is all the way back against all three jaws, and that, so that way you don't have it off center. And then we're gonna take our tiny little level here, and this is why we wanted to make sure that the bed of the laser was level because this is going to be level to the ground and if the laser is not level, you can have some skew here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Tumbler is set up and now we can go over to light burn. So I'm gonna be engraving this dragonfly on the tumbler because my partner loves dragonflies and I figure since this is a gift for her, I should probably do something that she likes on it. Your results may vary. I've already got this set up. So I've got four layers, the blue, black, green, and red. Each of them corresponds to different settings for my fiber, which will engrave different colors on the stainless steel. Now, the one thing I wanna point out is because I am engraving on the X axis, so my tumbler is rotating this direction or that direction, I want the scan angle to go up and down because if you try to make it go across, you're gonna have a bad time. So I have mine go up and down, so I have rotated the scan angle 90 degrees, so it goes up and down. I've turned off crosshatch. You don't want crosshatch on because again, that's gonna make it try and go the same direction as the rotary. It's gonna give you a bad time. Everything else is gonna be very dependent on what you are engraving and how you're trying to engrave it. So as you can see, I have a ton, a ton, a ton of testing that I've done on stainless steel. And also I have a sacrificial tumbler that I was testing on yesterday with different patterns. I even, I've run the dragonfly a couple times now and you can see I've got different test patterns. As I just mentioned, I have a sacrificial tumbler that I used for testing yesterday and I wanna take a quick second to talk about that. You are going to need to waste, well, I shouldn't say waste, but you're gonna to need to use materials for testing. Do not expect that you're gonna go online and find the perfect settings from somebody else and apply them to the material and your laser and have it turn out perfectly the first time. It's not gonna happen. So if you're doing this for to sell things, one thing I would recommend is whenever someone asks you to do things like tumblers or whatever, that you include in your quote the cost of an extra tumbler for sacrificial use, or if they are providing the materials, you need to ask them for one extra because you need to get it dialed in. All right, so all the, laser, all the layers are set and ready to go. Let me go through the rotary setup real quick. So we go to laser tool, rotary setup. This little green dot means it's already on. It's already on because it was saved with the file that I'm using a rotary. So first up, we got rotary type. I've got a chuck. You can see it's got a three jaw chuck. Looks like that. And then you can also have roller types. So if you have a roller type, you would select roller, but obviously I have a chuck, so we're gonna select chuck. You wanna make sure it's enabled. Mine is wired backwards, so I have to turn on reverse rotary direction because if I don't, my first testing here that I was doing, everything's backwards because the rotary was turning in the wrong direction. If that happens to you, you just need to turn on reverse rotary direction. Split size is gonna determine how far the laser can go left or right, or up and down, depending on how you have your rotary set up before the rotary actually turns. This can significantly decrease job time, but you have to be careful because the further you get from that center, the more out of focus the laser is gonna get, and that can give you some issues with the cleanness of your engraving. Then your rotary axis. So you can see my rotary is set up in this direction on the fiber because this gives me the most amount of room on my laser. So I have mine set to X axis. If you set your rotary in this direction, then you would set it to Y axis. Steps for rotation, you're gonna to need to find that 
based on your rotary, hopefully if you bought a decent rotary, it will tell you in the setup instructions exactly what that's supposed to be. And then you have the choice of object diameter or circumference. I find object diameter is super easy. I use my calipers, measure it, and then put that in for the object diameter, and then it automatically calculates the circumference for me. I have not modified the speed settings at all. Leave those as they are. I'm gonna hit okay. Next up, I wanna put my design where I want it to actually engrave on the tumbler. So I'm gonna go to frame, and you'll see it's gonna give me some a red outline of where that's gonna go. And now I can use the arrow keys in light burn, and you'll see as I push the up key here, it's gonna move my design further and further up the cup. Maybe right about there. You can also move it left to right, but it's dead center and I don't wanna move it left to right. So that's where it's gonna go. Now I can click start. It's not gonna start yet. It's going to bring up another pop-up. It's gonna ask us to make sure we have our split size, overlap, make sure all that is good. And then we can do whole shapes and then you can set your max shape size, my center here. If I click show, you'll see I'm gonna get this red line right down the middle and it only stays on for a few seconds here, but that's perfect. You can see it's going right through my spots here. And that's where I'm gonna focus my laser. So I'm gonna put my focus stick right in the middle. Also be very careful when you're using your focus stick, don't push down too hard because you can end up moving your tumbler or object around. I've got shapes in order. That's best for Chuck. That's what I'm using. You can also use this to rotate, let me set this to 10, to jog your rotary from one side to the other. So if you wanna move it to a different location, and then you can hit set zero. So now if I jog it and then go to zero, it's gonna to go to the right place. We're all set and ready to go. We've got our spot set. It's gonna engrave up here. All I have to do is click start and we're gonna let this engrave. In the beginning, I did mention that there is a caveat with doing color engraving with the diode laser. And that is, it is really inconsistent. Every time I've tried to do color engraving on stainless steel with my diode laser, I get colors, but it is really hard to reproduce the exact same colors. I know a lot of other people say the exact same thing. And I just wanna put that out there that it might be hit or miss for you getting the colors that you want when you're trying to do this if you're using a diode laser as opposed to a fiber laser. And even with the fiber laser, there are differences. For example, using my GI30 here, I engraved and did test patterns on little stainless steel business cards, and that was very consistent. But as soon as I switched to these stainless steel tumblers, which is a slightly different stainless steel, different results. So just be prepared. If you'd like to see what else you can do with a fiber laser, be sure and check out my video up here about 3D engraving brass coins. Thanks for watching.